normal microflora it denotes the population of microorganisms that inhabit or resides on the skin and mucous membranes of healthy or normal person it is right or or in another way we can say that normal microflora are microorganisms that are frequently found in a particular site normal healthy individuals and they are mostly bacteria and in doesn't cause any type of disease the skin and mucous membranes always harbor or inhabit a variety of microorganisms that can arrange that can be arranged basically into two groups one resident flora another one transient flora as the name suggests resident means they are permanently member over they are permanently residing over there transient they are residing over there for a time being right for a short period of time for here we can see these are the common basically uh, all these can be categorized into the, uh, like oh, microbes into four categories but majorly they are they they are of two types resident and transient common cells natural they they have natural relationship with our body host right residents they will remain in on our body what do you call skin or mucous membranes for a long time transient they are present for a short time and there is carrier state in which they are present normally but they are not going to affect for instance streptococcus pneumoniae right okay next we will see see as we have already seen types of normal microflora two types broadly one is resident and the one is transient resident consists of a fixed type of microorganisms regularly found in a given area at a given age if they are disturbed they will again recolonize right okay but in case of transient they are um, under certain conditions they their population will be present and they will uh, what do you call it, vanish or they will disappear after certain and they may last for hours days or weeks okay and we can see another type that is okay transient ones the trans we have already seen these are non pathogenic or potentially pathogenic microorganisms that inhabit the skin or mucous membranes for hours days or weeks it is derived from where does these microbes or transient microbes comes from they comes from the environment and does not produce any disease and does not establish itself permanently on the surface generally they have have little significance so long as the normal resident flora remains intact however if the resident flora is disturbed transient microorganisms may colonize proliferate and produce disease right okay fine so these are like different resident microflora on suppose on on nose there are since it is in external contact of the environment so they are present uh, they have different resident microflora mouth since again uh, mouth we are eating food so from there there these microbes comes trachea again bronchi we are inhaling oxygen from the environment these microbes is comes okay so these are residents biota of our body right okay there are certain factors which may influence the normal microflora for instance a younger one will have different microflora than the elderly neighbor right a male and female will have different microbial population okay so the what are the various factors which can mm, influence the normal microflora in human being the genetic makeup right age at what age he or she is sex what is their nature male or female stress in stress conditions the micro what you call flora it could vary nutrition based on the nutrition what kind of nutrition one is taking on that also this will vary right diet what is the regular diet right okay and antibiotics and other drugs it has been seen that there are certain diseases and there are certain condition in which upon taking certain drugs one micro will be like we are taking drugs to inhibit one micro but while inhibiting another microbes will be what you call promoted so their number will increase so these are the various factors which affects the normal microflora okay if mm, we have already seen that they are basically of two types transient and resident 
the most comprehensive analysis there are 26 different distinct body of normal microflora 20, 27 distinct body sites and reveal the presence of 22 bacteria phyla with most sequences 92.3 percent related to just four phyla whatever there are different body sites like 27 distinct body sites and probably these are categorized into 20, 22 bacterial phyla and which which comprises 92.3 percent and they are again further classified these 92% into actinobacteria 36.6%, permicutes 34.3%, proteobacteria 11.9% and bacteriodoids 9.5%. Here we can see means whatever ni normal microflora are present on our body, they are compromised, they are comprised of these four, right? Okay. And the total compromise comprises 92.3% bacteria only. Fine. Okay, let's see again. Among actin, we have seen here like this is 36.6 percent actinobacteria, firmicutes 34.3 percent, proteobacteria 11.9 percent, bacteroids 9.5 percent. So again, in actinobacteria, what kind of those microbes they are? Coranibacterium, Coranibacterium diphtheria, it causes diphtheria, and why it is present? Because during our uh, what do you call young age, DPT vaccine is given, right? Okay. DPT vaccine is given. So from that, um, this Coranibacterium comes. Coranibacterium diphtheria, it causes diphtheria. Propionibacterium, Propionibacterium, there is acne, it causes acne. Okay, so it is also present on our skin. Microbacterium and Micrococcus. Micrococcus luteus is there, they are normally present among actinobacteria, right? Another one is Firmicutes. Firmicutes, Staphylococcus and Clostridium. Staphylococcus aureus, they are normally present on our skin, right? Okay. And whenever we wash our hand with and soaps and this one called any this one hand wash, they their population decreases for a time being after a certain time they again recolonize. Another one is Clostridium, different species of Clostridium, Clostridium tetani, Botulium, Clostridium perfringens, right? Okay. Then there is Proteobacteria. Among them, it is Pseudomonas, Cirrhacia, Helomonas, Stento, Stent. Stenotrophona monas, Delphia, Comomonas, and Genthinobacterium, right? Among bacteroids, it is Fingobacterium and Crisiobacterium. Yes, these the these my, normal microflora they interact with the host, right? And their relationship can be categorized and could be of different types, right? Yes. As we have um, these, uh, what do you call normal microflora, they can be broadly again based on their food nature. They could be either saprophytes, saprophytes which lives on the dead decaying matter. Facultative pathogens means they are not um, they are, they they will become pathogenic under certain conditions. Otherwise, they will present normally. Common cells, they, they means one is they will be benefited, but it is not going. They are not going to harm us, right? And one is completely or true pathogens. They will, they are going to affect us, right? Okay. So these normal microflora of our human body can be again further based on that pathogen. It can, could be of these four categories, right? Okay. Mutualism. You all know what common cellism. When one is benefited, another one is unaffected. Mutualism. Both are benefited, right? Parasitism. One is benefited, another will be at loss. Okay. Again, this human microflora can be broadly categorized into argan flora, all these flora, right? We have seen among 100%, 92.3% were bacteria, right? Among those, argan flora in these human, like on our body, more like more, uh, one is argan flora, another one is fungal flora, another one is bacterial flora. Among argan, there is methano, brevi bacterium, smithi, and meth methano spherisia, stadium mania. Then there is Canada species and Malaysia species, Malaysia species on the skin. Then there are major groups of, sorry, bacterial flora and we have already seen in previous slides. Okay, let's talk about uh, uh, one of the major organ of our body that is skin. Skin, since it is um, in direct contact with our atmosphere or environment, so most of the, like, uh, it is always exposed to the environment. This one, it is one of the largest organ, which is roughly two meters square of area, which inhabits almost 
10 raised to the power 2 to 10 raised to the power 4 organisms per square centimeter on our skin. Okay, unfavorable in unfavorable habitat for microorganisms. There are like this may vary. Certain cases one has many areas subject to period periodic drying. This this could vary based on drying drying if uh, conditions are dry. This could vary. Acidic pH. This is a, go, again going to affect them. High sodium chloride concentration. Salt is inhibitory, so again their population may vary. Right? Okay. Most skin microbes are associated with certain glands. For instance, acronym they are associated with the acrine gland, dispersed sweat glands. Then there is apocrine glands. Sweat glands activated during puberty, underarm, genital area, and there is sebaceous gland with each hair follicle. Right? Okay. This was about skin, and since these gland secretions contain whatever these we have seen that all these three glands they have water amino acids urea salts and fatty acids that can serve as nutrients right so staphylococcus epi epi means upon dermis skin means staphylococcus or aureus or, epidermis staphylococcus epidermis which is present on the skin they are found in the regions of high moisture whenever high moisture is there these uh, what they call staphylococcus strain will present over the right okay again on these like cutaneous surfaces including urethra and outer ear staphylococcus epidermis is present and most commonly and in some small amount staphylococcus aureus curani bacteria or diphtheroids streptococci certain like pepto streptococci and yeast which is canada which is an yeast is also present right among staphylococcus Epidermidis, major inhabitant. It is one of the major inhabitant, which makes up more than 90% of the flora. Okay. Then there is Staph aureus, which is mainly present on nose, perineum, vulvar skin. And occurrence in nasal passages varies with age being greatest in newborn, less in adults. Right. Okay. Then there is Micrococcus, diphtheroid, propiny bacterium. For example, propiny bacterium acne. In young children, young or children younger than 10 years are rarely colonized with it. After that, during the teen phase, uh, this becomes more in numbers, right? Okay. The skin of the face, neck, hands, and buttocks carries pathogenic hemolytic streptococci and staphylococci, right? Penicillin resistant staphylococci are seen, this will be capital, and are seen in individuals working in hospitals, right? Right, because in those conditions, this microbe is more common. Okay. Here, frequently harbors Staphylococcus aureus. It forms a reservoir for cross infection. That means Staph aureus are normally present in hair, and there is a possibility of cross contamination. From here, it may come to other parts of our body. Okay. Fine. So, that was about normal microflora of skin. Let's talk about normal microflora of conjunctiva. Conjunctiva, right? Since, uh, like, there are already certain natural, what do you call, um, glands or enzymes which protects us from uh, our eyes. Like, there is lysozyme in tears. Then there is salt, salt which uh, ruptures the cell membrane of most of the pathogens. And lysozymes again degrades, right? So, besides this, there are certain what what you call so that part or this one conjunctiva very less microbial population are present variety of bacteria that is low numbers present why because i have already told you it is high moisture obviously the our eyes they have always moisture why because this is one reason to drop the vertical lower down the percentage of microbes blinking mechanically this one due to the blinking of eyelids they also remove the pathogen or this microbes continuously Lacrimal secretions include lysozyme, as I've already told you, peptidoglycan break. So this lysozyme, they attack on the peptidoglycan, which is present on the gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Gram-positive have thick layer, gram-negative have thin layer. So this lysozyme, they attack on the peptidoglycan and they rupture the peptidoglycan. So in that case, the micro will be killed. Okay. Among the predominant organisms of the eyes, in eyes, which microorganisms or which normal microflora are present normally. Diphtheroids or anabactum diphtheria, Staphylococcus epidermidis, non-hemolytic streptococci, hemophilus, and Moraxella species. Right, okay. Fine. 
come to the normal microflora of oral cavity the normal microflora of oral cavity will vary from stages of life like if a newborn baby will have different normal microflora an infant a young adult a adult and elderly people will have different mic normal microflora of oral cavity right okay this since these are the oral cavity provides as a shelter for microbes and the why because there are certain left out um, food which is present over there and these uh, uh, microbes uh, they take they take they take food from there okay and they get shelter So normal microflora of oral cavity, generally the food present in our mouth, that as a food source for these microbes present in our oral cavity and uh, they also, these microbes take, they take a shelter in our oral cavity and they flourish over there in the margins crevices between the teeth and deep folds of the tonsils okay and bacteria feed on the food particles and dead epithelial cells and if there's a poor hygiene like not proper brushing and all can lead to the periodontal diseases okay and most common microorganisms are species of alpha hemolytic streptococci in oral cavity right This normal microflora of all cavity, this will vary from um, the stages, various stages of life. Like during birth, the microflora will be different. In a neonate one, the microflora will be different. In teeth, when teeth start appearing at that time, the microflora will be different. In during puberty stage, uh, micro, this microbial flora will be different. And, the, and in the gingival sebus area, and all these and during these stages the micro population it will vary right so during birth time there is the mouth is completely sterile but after a certain time with feeding and all sterile mouth within four to and due, and due to respiration for 12 hours lactobacillus lion streptococci appears after that in neonate this is during birth after new newborn right streptococcus salivaris Staphylococci, Nizeria, and Moraxella cateralis is present. When the teeth appears in infant at that time, Streptococcus mutans and Streptococcus parasanguis is present. And then there is when this gums comes, right? Okay, change area in those area. Anaerobic species and yeast, right? Like Canada, they start appearing during the puberty stage. Bacteroids, okay, and spirochetes are present. Spirochetes trichoderma is there all these barricades okay then in per ml of saliva there is almost 10 response of 8 bacteria and which is potentially greater than 700 species okay this is the same thing at the different stages of life different microflora is present right okay okay this is again not human or this micros present normally right okay we have already seen these are present in saliva and this due to this dental plaque and all different species so they are normally present in their mouth okay. their, their conditions what you call their population it will vary based on during any drug it is being taken or any this uh, what you call disease conditions so let's talk about normal microflora of nose and nasopharynx nose things again it is in direct contact with the environment right so the nasopharynx of the infant is completely sterile at birth but after two to three days it acquires the flora from the air right the nasopharynx is a natural habitat of the common pathogenic bacteria causing infection of the nose throat bronchi and lungs certain gram positive organisms from the intestinal tract they may also come up that is that will be very rare right 
such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, E. coli, Paracolones, and Proteus species are also occasionally found in normal persons, right? Okay. Their population or this microbial population in the nasopharynx could vary after recall taking the penicillin therapy because penicillin they are their attacks on the peptidoglycan that is cell wall containing bacteria, mainly gram positive bacteria, right? The flora of the nose harbors diphtheria or diphtheroids, cranibacterium, diphtheria, streptococcus, streptococcus, hemophilus, moraxella, lacunata. All these are present in the flora of the nose. Okay, normally. These modes of protection, normal microflora of the respiratory tract, they protect us from different uh, diseases. There are certain, uh, what do you call, phenomena or structures in our body or our nose or nasopharynx which protects from the pathogenic microbes, right? See, for instance, continuous stream of flowing mucus produced by the ciliated cells. Stream of flowing mucus. So, ciliated cells that produce mucus due to which they, uh, they protect us, right? Phagocytic action of the microphages. Production of lysozyme in mucus. In mucus, there is lysozyme which again kills the pathogens, right? Major sections of the respiratory tract. There are basically two, two sections of the respiratory tract, upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. Upper respiratory tract are directly in contact with the environment. So, this is colonized by wide assortment of microorganisms, for instance, streptococci, streptococci, gram negative cocci, nizarian, right? including pathogens, streptococcus aureus, streptococcus pyrogenes, and there is streptococcus pneumoniae and Corynebacterium diphtheria. These are present in the upper respiratory tract, right? Okay. Then there is lower tract. Lower respiratory tract, rare cases after infection in during in disease condition, these will be inhabited. Trachea, lungs, and these are these remains normally sterile. But once uh, during any disease condition, any viral infection, firstly upper respiratory tract, if it is not cured, then they will move to the progress to the lower respiratory tract. Okay. Now we will talk about normal microflora of intestinal tract, intestine. There are various normal microorganisms when, which are present in, and reside over, which are reside over there and in turn they produce certain vitamins. Right, okay. So 80 to 90 percent of the newborn infants, the meconium is sterile, but in 10 to 20 percent cases of few organisms probably acquired during labor may be present, right during labor period of a mother, right, okay. At that time, so 10 to 20 percent cases of audience, they may acquire what you call some micro normal microflora. Within 2 to 24 hours of birth, an intestinal flora is established partly from below and pa partly by invasion from above, right, from this 20 percent rest and from these things. If a new, in new date, Definitely, he or she will be breastfed. Okay, during that from the new rate, they will receive a, a my, normal microflora from the milk, right? So these will be mainly lactobacilli. The intestine contains lactobacilli from the milk, lactobacillus bifidus, consisting 99% of the total organism in the fetus, right? Okay, enterococci, colon bacilli, and staphylococci. And then there will be inartificially fed bottles, and suppose. Um, in that one case, in certain cases, they are uh, newborn is given bottle milk, right? In that case, lactobacillus, acidophilus, and partly enterococci, and gram positive aerobic and aerobic bacilli will be present. Okay, so these in the in though in the bottled cases like. In uh, neonates or newborn, in, which is given with in bottle, right? In that case, which microbes will be present? Of the bottle-fed infants, enteric enterobacteries, bacteroids, enterococci, lactobacilli, and clostridia. Okay, with a change of food to the adult pattern. Now the infant will grow, 
the effort will be more or less same to that of order in that case. Diet has marked influence on the relative composition of the intestinal tract and fecal flora. In normal adults, microorganisms of the surface of this esophageal wall are those swallowed with saliva. So microbes which will be present in that esophagus will be directly coming from the food and water which we are taking or swallowed with saliva and food. Right. Due to low pH of the stomach, most of the pathogens or microbes they will get killed. It is virtually sterile except soon after eating. Right. In patients with carcinoma of the stomach, there is there is the proliferation of gram positive cocci and bacilli. And if suppose the no acid is not produced, in that case, certain gram positive cocci and bacilli they will flourish, they will grow over there, right? The number of bacteria increases progressively beyond the duodenum to the colon and being comparatively low in the small. In adult duodenum, there are almost 3 raised to power, 10 raised to power, 3 to 10 power, 6 bacteria per gram. In jejunum and proximal ileum, this number in, is varies from 10 raised to power 5 to 10 raised to power 6 bacteria per gram. While in lower ileum and cecum, this number increases to 10 raised to power 8 to 10 raised to power 10 bacteria per gram of the contents. Right Here, if you will see, there is more solid waste. So that's why food bacterial population increases per gram right okay in duodenum and upper ileum lactobacilli and enterococci is present more in numbers but in the lower ileum and cecum the flora resembles the fecal flora okay there are about 10 to the power 11 bacteria per gram of the contents in the colon and rectum which consists of about 10 to 20 percent of the fecal mass while in case of adult normal colon the resident bacteria flora is mostly 96 to 99 percent anaerobes and these anaerobes are mainly streptococci anaerobic lactobacilli clostridia and bacteroids which is about one to two four percent then there is aerobes enterococci coliforms a small number of proteas pseudomonas lactobacillus mycoplasma and candida if you will see here esophagus so esophagus it will have the what you call microbes which is coming from the saliva in food right okay they will enter here in the stomach it is acidic in ph acidic pH, most of the uh, microbes they will kill or we consider it sterile okay and if it is get damaged due to carcinoma this will not work so gram positive will increase right then there is deuteronomy and trococca lactobacilli in lacto in this this area lactium lactobacilli right in our stomach then there is jejunum or small intestine and ileum these microbes will be this again enterobacteria enterococca and lactobacilli lactobacilli and in colon or large intestine colon of the large here from here onwards we can see all these microbes they will be dominating why because there is more fecal matter uh, food waste Right, so due to that reason, the number of population of microbes increases, right. Large intestine, we have already seen in large intestine, these microbes are present in dominant amount, right, okay. So let's talk functions and products of intestinal flora. These, they, some of the flora, they produce what you call uh, certain beneficial products. Intestinal microbes carry out a variety of metabolic activities that provides various compounds. The type and amount produced are influenced by the composition of intestinal flora and diet. Compounds produced include vitamin B12 and vitamin K and certain gases, right? Okay, by these microbes like E. coli and certain other which are present in our intestinal tract. Okay, now let's talk about the normal microflora of urogenital tract, both male and female. The, the this one their urethra they will have different microbial population if we we'll talk about this one normal urogenital tract mycobacterium smegmatis smegatis a harmless common cell is found in the secretions smega smegma right okay of both males and females genitalia another one is Okay, it is commonly present. Then there is urethra of male will have different microbial population. Urethra of female will have different microbial population. 
urethra of males, especially in the penile urethra, aerobic and aerobic bacteria can be found in high amounts. For instance, Lactobacilli, Gardnerella, Vaginalis, Bacteroids, and Alpha Hemolytic Streptococci. Occasionally, Chlamydia may be there, Chlamydia trachomatis. It causes trachoma, sexual transmittance, and there is urea plasma, urea lyticum, based on urea, right? Okay, and may be present. While in case of female, female urethra is either sterile or contains a few gram positive coca, coca. Okay, then comes to the vulva in case of female, right? Okay, vulva of newborn child, sterile, but after 24 hours, it acquires were number of flora non-pathogenic ones from skin vagina and intestine nature of these flora in vagina depends on the ph of its secretion and its enzyme content in the first 24 hours it is invaded by micrococi and enterococci and diphtheroids after two to three days maternal estuarine induces glycogen deposition in vaginal epithelium this leads to the growth of lactobacillus which produce produces acid from the glycogen and and flora for a few weeks is similar to that of adult right this is in case of newborn vulva okay after passively estrogen is transferred has been eliminated in the urine and glycogen disappears along with daughter renalins bacillus and the ph of the vagina becomes alkaline right this brings about the change in flora to micrococa, alpha and non-hemolytic streptococci, coliforms and diphtheroids. At puberty, what happens? Again, the glycogen reappears and pH changes to acid due to the metabolic activity of dotterylines, bacilli, E. coli and yeast. This changes helps in the prevention of colonization by possible harmful microbes. Right After puberty, but before menopause, lactobacilli becomes more dominant during this during period period during this period ovary is active and produces a large amount of glycogen right lactobacillus ferments glycogen to form lactic acid and maintaining ph highly acidic that is 4.4 to 4.6 at this ph only acid tolerant lactobacilli can grow then there is last during pregnancy there is increase in the streptococcus Epidermidis, Staphylococca, Epidermidis, Dodarillians, Bacilli, and Yeast, and occasionally other members of international flora may be present. After menopause, again, there will be change of microbes in females. Flora resembles to that found before puberty, right? Okay, Vagin vaginal flora includes anaerobic cocci, Bacilli, Listeria, anaerobic streptococci, Mycoplasma, Gardnerella vaginalis, Lizeri, and Spirochetes. So this is what we have talked about, normal microflora of humans, which keeps on varying, which are, and generally these are transient and resident. Okay, thank you.